Hi everyone, this is Alan Rosinski of Metro Manhattan Office Space. Good afternoon. I'd like to discuss the growing role of the life science and biotech sector in the commercial real estate market in New York City after and during the pandemic. This sector has seen a lot of growth. In 2020, they leased double the amount of space that they had occupied in New York City in 2019. Now, currently, Life Sciences leases about 1.7 million square feet of office research lab space in New York City. But CBRE has estimated that by 2025, they are going to be leasing 4.2 million square feet. So this sector is rapidly growing. Now, the city of New York and Mayor de Blasio have made an effort to encourage the growth of the life science sector, to make sure that these research facilities, scientists, don't leave New York City and go to cities like Boston, which compete for this industry, to have this industry. So there is a $500 million initiative, which has been established by Mayor de Blasio. It's called the Life Sci NYC Initiative. There's $500 million of incentives to be provided to these facilities over 10 years, and its goal is to create 16,000 jobs in New York City. And it's gonna be high paid jobs. And also the basic goal is to make New York City the public health capital of the world, or at least of the United States. Now, New York has some of the major, finest academic institutions, research facilities, and hospitals in the United States. Among them are Columbia University, Rockefeller University, the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, and the New York Stem Cell Foundation. There are exceptionally talented physicians, researchers, and scientists who live and work in New York City, and it would be silly for the city of New York not to make an effort to keep them in New York City and to be sure that they don't leave New York City because of issues obtaining affordable office and lab space for this particular sector. Now, in the past, the development of the sector was hindered by a lack of affordable office space. But since rents have dropped considerably since the start of the pandemic and that the vacancy rates have increased, at least to the point where they were 10 years ago, this has now changed. And you have certain developers which are repositioning their buildings for the life science and biotech sector. Now, at the start of the pandemic, demand for traditional office space crashed. But what was least affected, what recovered the fastest, was anything related to healthcare, medical, and life sciences. Maybe half of the requirements that we have been working on have been psychiatrists, physical therapists, physicians. We worked with a COVID-19 testing center, major facility that required 5,000 square feet of office space. At the moment, we represent two Columbia University professors, Dr. Daniel Griffin and Dr. Vincent Racaniello. They are seeking a space to create content. What's interesting and what's characteristic about the search, they need a functional space, which needs to be exceedingly quiet because the production of content and the professors are seeking a space in the garment district, which offers affordable loft space in uh, former industrial style buildings. This is not quite traditional life science, but it's very, very related to the life science uh, industry. Now, they create podcasts and video content, which explains to the general public issues related to the pandemic, issues pertaining to virology. They are essentially, or when you listen to them, they seem like Columbia University courses, which are available for free to the general public. And if you want to understand what's going on with the pandemic, like most of us do at this time, I would strongly recommend that you watch Microbe TV on YouTube. Now, the channel's grown greatly. I think it has something like 81,000 subscribers, and I can understand why. Because as a source of information regarding what is occurring with the pandemic, it is far superior to any sources of information online or any print journalism. I mean, personally, I get my information from the Wall Street Journal, BBC. I confess, occasionally I watch CNN, but many of these outlets are tinged by politics. These publications, they have agendas, but by far the most objective, scientific, 
Fact-based recording I have seen on the pandemic has been on microbe TV, also well-documented, scientific, but accessible. I mean, what happened recently, and this is kind of representative, at 787 11th Avenue, Mount Sinai just leased 165,000 square feet of office space in a 505,000 square foot building across three floors. Now, the same building also leased 36,000 square feet to a company called Neri Oxman, which is affiliated with MIT and is going to use the space for a research facility. I mean, another example of what's going on is a purchase in Queens by a developer called Botanic Properties, which has a focus on life science development. They bought a building with a school in it. The lease for the school expires in two years, and at that point, they're gonna develop a 270,000 square foot building, which is geared towards the life science industry. Now, this has occurred at 24-02 Queens Plaza South. The developer, Botanic Properties, paid $40 million for this building, and in two years, they will start to reposition it. Good move, because this is a growing sector in Manhattan. Now, commercial real estate in New York City has always been cyclical. You have industries that start leasing space. They grow, they plateau, maybe because of technological change, they're no longer viable, maybe because of foreign competition. An example is manufacturing, which was such a predominant tenant in New York City and the boroughs until the early 1970s, only to be replaced by the service sector, which has remained key tenants, advertising, marketing uh, agencies, law firms, CPAs, but now with remote work, maybe that's going to change and you'll have other companies which will come in, other industries which will come in and they'll pick up the slack and maybe one of those industries, not maybe, certainly one of those industries will be biotech and life sciences. If you found this content interesting or helpful, I'd be happy if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can always find me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Metro Manhattan. Until the next time.